Hi everybody, my name is Maddie Culbertson. Uh, I'm originally from Chicago suburbs in Illinois. I went to Illinois State University for my bachelor's in nutrition and dietetics. I matched to a dietetic internship here in Asheville, so I moved here almost three years ago, um, and I'm finishing up my master's in public health at Lenore Ryan University right down the road. Uh, so I'm gonna be cooking with you today. We're doing this COVID style. Uh, the pea that I'm gonna be making is called garlic butter mushroom shrimp pasta. Um, I love pasta and seafood and garlic from my Italian lineage is runs through my veins. So we're throwing it all together today and we're going to use some ingredients that you can find at the local farmers markets, including the ASAP market. So yesterday I went to the ASAP market. I picked up about five ounces of mushrooms um, and my mushroom vendor is Chris from Asheville Fungi. Um, so I picked up um, some blue oyster mushrooms. So they're they're fleshy, they're large, um, they're easy to saute, cook with, they absorb really good flavor, um, and they were harvested locally, which is great. I also picked up about one pound of uh, large shrimp here. Um, I believe the vendor is Ocean, Mother Ocean, um, and they are there almost every week. So make sure to pop by uh, their location there. They have a lot of great options of seafood. I almost bought their scallops, but I was like, another time. <laughs> um, and then I got Rio Veritoli is the other vendor that has pasta. So he makes fresh pasta at the market every week. This is uh, egg fettuccine noodles. Um, these are three nests of noodles. So usually, let's see, my recipe calls for eight ounces. So two nests is about eight ounces, but we're gonna throw another one in there because we're gonna be eating this for dinner tonight. Um, uh, what's great about the fresh pasta with this vendor is you can buy whole grain options, which means that it's higher in fiber um, and it's helpful for uh, regulating blood sugar as well um, and regular bowel movements, which is awesome. Okay, we're gonna get started. The first thing we're gonna do is start to cook our pasta. So because fettuccine is a larger noodle, we're gonna cook it for maybe closer to 10 or 12 minutes. Um, after it's been boiled that long, go ahead and pull one out and give it a bite and see if it tastes al dente. And al dente just means slightly firm when you bite down on it. So it's not rubbery noodle and it falls apart. It's still got a slight kind of structure to it. So we're gonna get started boiling that. Um, also, this shrimp is not peeled or deveined, so I'm gonna pause and uh, do that behind camera. And I'll be with you in just a moment. All right, we're back. The pasta is in the boiling water. Um, I have peeled and deveined the shrimp. And the first thing we're gonna do is grab our large skillet um, I like a skillet that has a little bit more of a top to it. Um, so this is a nice, large, flat skillet. It just means when you're stirring things together, nothing's gonna be flying out and creating quite a bit of a mess. So we're gonna heat this up. And on our recipe, we're gonna heat up some olive oil, one tablespoon of olive oil, and one tablespoon of butter. So I do have a whole stick of butter. This looks like a lot but I'm just gonna be cutting as we go based on what the recipe calls for. So one tablespoon here. Peel off the paper, toss it in the pan. And my olive oil um, is from Areno Olive Oil, who is a, a vendor at the Mills River Farmer's Market. Uh, he has olive uh, fields that are out in Greece and he harvests them every year and then he brings back his oil and I buy a three liter uh, jar of it. So this is as much as I have left until the market starts but um, it tastes very good. It's not diluted. What's interesting about olive oil is if you buy it from say a supermarket um, and you buy just whatever brand with the cheapest per ounce, um, oftentimes those brands are diluting the olive oil with a different oil um, to, to kind of cheat the system, the cons consumer base there. So I like getting it from a local vendor. It tastes great. I know it's real. I know where it's from. And I, he's uh, my community member, my neighbor. So we're going to do one tablespoon of this. 
just a nice swirl. That's good. I'm gonna let that start to heat up. Uh, once it's sizzling, we're gonna add the shrimp to the skillet and season it with salt and pepper. Um, and in the meantime, I'm gonna start to cut up our garlic. Um, it, the recipe calls for three cloves of garlic. Now, a clove is just the one little guy here. So just cut off the very top. What I usually do is cut into thin slices and then just try to mince it from there. Be careful with your knife. Um, as somebody that cooks quite a bit at home, uh, being on a grocery budget, I have gotten good with knife skills, but with our knife, we're gonna be looking to have our thumb and our index finger over the top of the knife to control it, and then you lay the rest of your hand fingers down. Um, sounds ready. So we're gonna move this around. Yes. And here's our shrimp. We're gonna pop those guys right into our pan. Yes. Okay, mincing. Uh, three cloves. If you're somebody that loves garlic, go ahead and do more. It's not going to hurt you. Um, garlic is something that's grown in the ground, um, so I would consider it a, a vegetable. Um, there is a lot of good research out there about garlic's um, antioxidant properties, uh, which means that it's anti-cancerous. Um, it's protective against chronic disease. So if you're curious, Go find some research on garlic, evidence-based research, so not .com or .net, we're looking for .gov or um, any sort of evidence-based literature on, say, if you have access to a library site, a database, go check that out. That's always really good, trusted information that we can use. Mincing up my third bulb here. Yes, it smells so good. And the oils hang out on your fingers for a while, so in a few hours it'll still <laughs> smell like garlic. Um, okay, this is done. You hear the sizzle? It smells great. I feel like Rachel Ray right now. <laughs> We're gonna move those around. Shrimp is considered a shellfish, and shellfish needs to cook. Um, hey Google. What's the internal temperature of seafood? Sure, here's some helpful information I found on the web. Fish and shellfish is 145. <laughs> so what we're looking for visually of this, the shellfish or uh, shrimp here is that it turns pink. So pink means that it's done. We're gonna turn the heat down a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper to crack the pepper. And they come in their own little wooden holder. And here's your salt. I use pink Himalayan salt. Um, I can't cite any sources right now of what pink Himalayan salt is or why it's good for you. But what I understand is it's made from, it's harvested from salt that's up way at the top of the mountain and it's got minerals in it, uh, and it's a smaller percentage of sodium. So, you know, table salt may be 90, 95% sodium, but pink Himalayan salt is other minerals and a lower percentage of salt. So if you're somebody that you might need to be controlling your salt intake, um, maybe switching to pink Himalayan, which means you're still going to do two cracks of salt, but it's not going to be affecting you as much as it usually would with table salt. Here we go. Smells good. They look great. Almost done. They're turning pink, but they're not quite there. They're big guys. If you get small shrimp, it's definitely going to cook quicker. But these are some big shrimpies. Okay. Also, our water is boiling. Our noodles are. They're in nests, so they're starting to come out of the nests, and the bubbles on the top of the water mean that it's cooking. Probably won't take too long. Okay, we have our garlic. 
we also have to cut up our onion here. So everybody has their own way of cutting onions. I personally, when it comes with this, uh, the, the top like layer of it, I like to cut the, I would guess I'd call it the bulb, the very point um, off. And if you cut the other side off, then, so both sides are off, which means you've got flat, flat. If you put it on a flat edge and just cut halfway in, now you can use your fingers to get under that first layer and just peel it all off in one, one pull. So it's just way less labor intensive. And it works every time. There, nice. Let me make some space. Unfortunately, I do not have, we do not do composting at our house. We're working on it. By the year 2022, we're gonna have some composting plans. But otherwise, these, all these um, leftovers can go into a composting pile. We're gonna stir our shrimp. Our shrimp looks done. Woo! So we're gonna grab a plate or a bowl to take out the shrimp. Woo, my water, wow. I might need to switch pants. <laughs> okay, shrimp goes into a bowl. We're gonna keep the butter that's in the bottom of the pan here. That's what's gonna go into our sauce. Shrimp removed. We've just got a little bit of stuff on the bottom. Okay, put it back on the heat. Add three tablespoons of butter to the skillet and melt. So here's our butter that we just cut the one tablespoon off of. We're gonna cut three more. So now we have half of a stick left. Take off the paper. Throw it in there. It's gonna melt pretty quick. Okay, next is the garlic and onion. So we've got our garlic, check. Smells great. We are gonna cut up our onion. We just removed the skin. So now it's already halfway cut. So go ahead and just turn it, finish that cut. Now, you do not wanna be cutting something that's wobbly like this. So go ahead and turn it over on the flat side. Um, it says chopped, so that's like a rough chop. So it's not gonna be super small, but what I do is just cut it long ways into thin pieces and then hold all those pieces. I'm a lefty, if you're a righty, just do the opposite. And then cut them the other way. So now that they've been cut lengthwise, hold the onion and cut them the other way to make a nice rough chop. Watch out for your fingers. You can hear my cats in the other room. <laughs> it smells good, mom. And if you're gonna cry, it's fine. Just take a break. I'm already feeling it. I read that people that wear contacts don't get uh, teary-eyed with onions. Does anybody with contacts, can you attest to that? <laughs> if so, I'm getting contacts. Oh, God. Okay. Check. No skin on these onions. They're perfectly chopped. There's our garlic. The butter is ready. hear my Midwestern come out of there. Um, we're gonna take our cutting board, move all those onions and the garlic right into the pan. Oh, this is gonna smell great. I just had lunch, but I'm definitely eating this. <laughs> take your spatula, whoo, I'm crying, and start to move that onion around and the garlic, get it nice and coated with your new butter in the pan and all that leftover yumminess from the shrimp that we cooked. There we go. Great. My heat is on about a medium, medium high just to keep things moving. Um, from here, we're going to let it cook for a few minutes until translucent, which just means it's when you look at it, it's starting to look a little cl clearer. Um, if you cooked onions for like 30, 40 minutes, they would become very sweet. 
if you've ever had caramelized onions, oh, that's really tasty. Um, but we're not going to let them go that long. Okay, you. <laughs> These are our awesome. Uh, blue oyster mushrooms. Look at these guys. I can totally see them just chilling on a tree and this guy came and harvested them and sold them. I think that's awesome that we can kind of reuse what is in our, what's on our planet. Um, I didn't know that winter green is actually a tree branch. Like if you have winter green gum and, and things flavoring, that's from a tree branch. Look at those guys. So we're going to rinse these off and start to rough chop. It calls for seven mushrooms. That's pretty specific, but I would say this is about five ounces and that's good to go. Rinse. When you buy mushrooms from the store, that's also a nice alternative. Just something to keep in mind is to rinse them before you start to cook with them because oftentimes they've got leftover dirt and stuff from the earth. If you want to gain a little more of an immune system, you can go for it. I like to rinse them off. Ooh, this is so these mushrooms are going to be nice and fleshy, um, which if you're somebody that it doesn't eat animal protein, you know, mushrooms can be a great alternative. For meat. Um, I know a lot of people that get burgers, like a plant-based burger, will get a portobello mushroom burger, which is a huge fat mushroom top. They grill it, they add great seasoning, and it acts as the patty, and it's super yummy. So these guys are chopped. Whew. Lion's mane is also a good option. Um, I can't say I've used them before. I have dried mushrooms. Pisgah Gourmet is another local brand. Um, these are dried mushrooms. So what you do is you just rip off the top and then let them soak in water and the flavor is like super saturated. So though I'm using fresh mushrooms today, dried mushrooms are also a great option as well. Oh no, I lost my recipe. Hold on. I should stir this. Great. Let's check our pasta. Now's a good time to pop one in your mouth and see if it's al dente, remember? Oh. Okay. Okay, they're ready. Mm. I'm just gonna rinse them real quick so they're not, they stop cooking. All right, it's been about five minutes, so we are ready to move on with our onions and our garlic. What's next? Add mushrooms and cook until soft. Okay, our mushrooms are ready. Adding them to the mixture here. Lovely. I love one pot meals. I know this may not count as a one pot meal because we're adding things, you know, periodically, but you have less dishes at the end of your cooking session. And if you have one really good reliable pot, that's really nice that you can just kind of use the same thing however many days a week, wash it, put it back, grab it out again. I hate to say I've joined the the Instant Pot Cult, but it's true. <laughs> I got one for Christmas and I can pretty much use it with every meal or at least one meal a day. You can saute, you can brown, you can boil, you can cook rice, you can make um, slow cooking. Yeah, that's an, uh, we use that when we do corned beef and cabbage over uh, uh, for St. Patrick's Day every year. That's really tasty. So we've tangent. We've added our mushrooms and we're going to cook them until soft. Next we're going to add chicken stock or vegetable stock if you do not eat meat. I have some back here. We're going to pour half a cup 
is that your stock is organic. You might want to use it faster than usual, um, only because it's probably got a shorter shelf life, has less uh, processed, you know, chemicals to keep it good longer. It says easy open cap. Best buy. Oh yeah, we're good. So this is our half of a cup. We're gonna add that after a couple minutes of these mushrooms cooking. Smells great, looks great. They are translucent, we had mentioned. Um, so let's talk health benefits. So I know we're using olive oil, we're using uh, butter. We know that butter is considered a saturated fat. The reason we know that is because butter is solid at room temperature. So saturated means that on the carbon chain, they are full of hydrogens. So there isn't any space for what you would call um, a double bond, which means you'd have less than full hydrogens. There's some science for you. But our oil is liquid at room temperature, which means that it is unsaturated. There are double bonds on the carbon chain and that means that when it's floating around in our system and we've eaten it and our body's breaking it down, it's not being um, absorbed and floating as like a chunk. It's, it's liquid, you know? So this is what leads to uh, clots, um, you know, for coronary heart disease, we wanna be leaning away from saturated fats and trans fats. Olive oil, yeah, it may not be the best option as well, but it's better on the spectrum than butter. So oil, unsaturated fats, mono and poly, and our butter here is saturated fat, which means it's full of hydrogens. Okay. Add mushrooms till soft, add the chicken stock. Okay, here we go. This is our last step. This is great. Mm -hmm. This is going to be so good. If you are somebody that has trouble following a recipe, um, I personally am one of those people. I usually will follow the recipe the first time, and then after that, I will change it to make it my own. I really love adding spinach or a, like a leafy green to pasta dishes. Uh, it just makes me feel like I have more of a veggie serving than just a ton of carbs. Um, for this recipe, you could certainly do whole grain pasta. Like I had mentioned earlier, that will boost uh, the fiber content of that pasta. Um, also, shrimp, is, you could also use, say, lobster or crab meat or scallops is always really tasty with pasta as well. Um, and if you do not eat meat, then I saw the other video of the um, the doctor that he cooked with tofu and I feel like tofu could totally be a good option because it absorbs whatever flavor that you cook it with. So tofu could be a great option. Um, we talked about butter, oil, mushrooms, really tasty. This is simmering, great. It says, add shrimp back into the skillet. <gasps> okay. So here is our cooked shrimp. It's been sitting for a few minutes. We are gonna pour it back in here to help absorb some of that flavor. These are our last few steps. Yes. It's gonna look just like the picture. <laughs> Yum. I know myself, so I have a feeling I'm gonna want more of the garlic flavor. So I'm gonna add a little bit more pepper just to finish it off. I'm not gonna add more salt I am somebody that tries to taste my food before I add salt to it, um, so that might be something nice to adopt if you're interested. I have garlic powder. <laughs> We're going to do this. Yes. Mm. Sizzle. Add the last tablespoon of butter. Okay. Here it is. We're going to add one more could be the tablespoon that you skip if you're trying to watch your fat content here. I'm going to follow the recipe. Wow, it looks great. Last. 
Seasoned dish with salt and pepper, yes. Toss in cooked noodles and garnish with parsley. Okay, if you have parsley that's in a can or, you know, for on the shelf, that's totally fine. I am somebody, this summer, I'm going to try to start my own herb garden outside. I've already got lemon balm, um, cilantro, basil needs a ton of sunlight. So if you don't have a good sunny spot, you're going to want to uh, put basil in the sun. And I would like to add parsley to that option. I think that would be great. Okay, here's our pasta. This is kind of heavy, but I'm going to try to show you. Oh, there's our pasta. Yes. Oh, good choice, Maddie. Good choice. Yummy. Now we're going to turn the heat off, and we're just going to let it kind of marinate. Um, with this pasta, like I had mentioned, it's al dente, so it's not all going to fall apart. We're going to mix it all together. I see the chicken stock kind of makes it a little uh, looser of the, the sauce. It's not like a thick sauce, um, but nonetheless, packed with flavor. Mushrooms have add some nice color. Wow. Pretty. Parsley, last step. This is probably from Ingalls. Nice big guy of parsley here. Adds a nice pop of green. This is still boiling, so I'm going to move it off the heat here. Mix it together. If you let it sit a little bit, that's going to let it thicken up. Um, if you're somebody that's ready to eat, just go for it. But I'm going to let it sit before I taste it. Wow. Okay, here we are. Here is our pasta. Wow. So you can see our shrimp is pink. Our fettuccine noodles are pretty big. Uh, we've got our translucent onions in there, our, uh, what are those, blue oyster mushrooms are a nice pop of color, some good nutrients. We're going to let it sit for a little bit to thicken up, Ooh, and we'll, we'll give it a taste. It is ready. I go ahead and I went ahead and uh, plated it for you, so we're going to tilt you here so you can see my beautiful pasta. Fettuccine noodles, shrimp, mushroom, butter, garlic, all the good things. I'm going to put you down. I'm going to give it a taste. Mm. I'm really looking forward to this. Let's see. Is this a good view? Yeah. <laughs> mm, wow. Wow. Fresh pasta is totally a different vibe. I really want you to give it a try. And our big shrimp, he's huge. Woo! I had a lot of fun <laughs> doing this recipe with you. I'll make sure to share the recipe with uh, Amy and the ASAP team so that they can put it on my video. But uh, I really hope to see you around the Asheville area. Uh, I hope that you stay well as we are transitioning out of COVID. So again, my name is Maddie. Um, I also work at the Mills River Farmer's Market uh, in Mills River, North Carolina. I am their demonstration kitchen coordinator. So if you enjoyed this or you like my personality, what kind of recipe that I put together, I create a recipe every week at that market. And I hope that you can come by and say hi and we can talk nutrition. Have a great day.